Hey, what up guys, GT Gamer here, and welcome back to Train Simulator 2022. Uh, I haven't recorded a video for a while, but I thought, you know, I might as well make a return. I've got some time off work, so why not make a video? And I've returned to Train Simulator because it's nice, it's laid back. It's very loud, but I can't turn the volume down, really. <laughs> oh, I should have worked that one out before I started. Uh, we are on the Southwestern Expressways route. Uh, we're currently at Bristol Temple Meads in a class 143 and we're going to be heading out towards towards Westbury. I definitely didn't forget what that was called. Um, I was trying to get a good angle for a thumbnail but this light is in the way. I was trying to get the building in the background. So I mean, ah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Right, let's get this party started, shall we? Let's turn my headlights on. There we go. Right, I need the HUD. Uh, behind the scenes little tip for you. The reason all of my time lapses in Train Sim are in widescreen is because I have the HUD at the bottom. <laughs> I've got to edit that out. But yeah, we're in the Class 143, which is a very old train. You don't really see them anymore. Um, I have ridden on them a few times. I used to go Cardiff quite a lot on these. Um, but yeah, they're very old units. Apparently, if I remember right, they were made by a bus company. Um, they've only got one wheel on each bogey, which is pretty odd, so the ride on these is horrific. Right, let's pick up our passengers, so open these doors for them, the front door's not opening. Uh, I'm going to put it into forward, and it's a lovely snowy day, so we're probably going to need our windscreen wipers. Right, just wait for the door to close, everyone on. It's only a nice little short trip, this one, it's about 30 miles. Uh, through Bath, some lovely scenery. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to go through the world famous box tunnel. Uh, which, if you don't know what that is, a tunnel on this track. Uh, it goes up at quite an angle, and rumour is that on Brunel's birthday, the famous uh, engineer that built it, the sun shines all the way through, and you can see it at either end. Don't know if that's true, I don't think it is. Right, let's get in the cab where it's a bit quieter. don't know what that sound... Oh, that sounds the windscreen wiper. <laughs> uh, right, let's head out here. Uh, that seems quite a high throttle setting. So yeah, you can see how old this train is. Uh, it does have AWS and all the modern-ish safety features. Um, but yeah, you can tell just by looking at it, this is not the most modern fire system. Manual override switch. Yeah, it's not the most modern system. Right, 25 miles an hour out of the station, past what definitely isn't B&Q. <laughs> Just in case you weren't aware. <laughs> uh, classic DIY store. That windscreen wiper is going to drive me mad. Do we actually need it? I'm going to hope not. It's only a little bit of cloudy snow. Right, so it's like four or five tracks. What's this? Six tracks by a... Uh, it soon spreads out into like different directions. Uh, we split off here. If you went left, then that would take you towards Cardiff, South Wales, uh, Bristol Parkway. What else in that direction? Uh, Avonmouth, Seven Tunnel Beach, Seven Beach, something like that it's called. But yeah, that's uh, follow that track, and that's where I live down there. So this is fairly local to me. Yes, is it well in my opinion, what they should have done is integrated this route into the Great Western Railway route on Train Sim. So then you'd have a massive route that stretched all the way from Penzance in the very southeast of England to South Wales, London. It's something that I'd love to see if all these routes that spur off each other if they just join them together. I can imagine that in a couple of years. Like think how far we've come. Oh, it's full speed now. Think how far we've turned video game wise in the last 20 years, right? We've gone from basically 8 bit color to um, games like this, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, where you can literally fly around the world. So I can see in the future something like that with Train Sim, where it's like you can drive on pretty much any real world train track that you want. Obviously, it'd be a very long and arduous project to make that, but the future of video games, I've got so much confidence in. They are going to be incredible. Uh, turning the windscreen wiper on and off just to, so it doesn't drive me mad. Uh, a max speed 75, so we're not going to hit the track speed limit along here. 
Um, I'm not following any real world train timetable. Uh, I haven't been bothered to look that up, <laughs> to be honest with you. I didn't even know where you'd look that up. Probably just Google it. Um, but we're just going to go along, stop at every station, and as I said, it's quite a short route, 30 miles, to uh, to Westbury. I've never been to Westbury. Been to Bath, though, which is a long this route. Uh, I think I'm going to have to face reality if I need the windscreen wiper on. Something I was wondering, and maybe you guys can help with this. So, in the UK, we drive on the left. And air trains drive on the left track as well when it's double track like this. Is there a similar thing in America? Because whenever I drive American trains on here, they always seem to be on the left as well, but America drives their vehicles on the right. So, I suppose my question is, do they also drive on the left? And if so, what is the reason for that? Um, I genuinely don't know the answer to that, so if you uh, if you do know, hit me up in the comments. Smash that like button while you're down there, classic YouTuber stuff here. Do you know, if I'd thought about it, I would have picked a different, maybe a quieter train or turn the volume down. If that's modelled after an actual sound effect for the windscreen wiper in this train, then... Oh my god, I have a new respect for whoever drove this. Can you open the window? It appears not. Ooh, you can turn the fan on. <laughs> what else have you got in it? That's the... Yeah, I'm not going to touch any of them stuff. Start up, shut down, don't want to play with that button. Sander probably works. Headlights. So yeah, very, very basic. Any of these work? Oh, we're coming up to our first station, guys. Canesham, I believe that's pronounced. Not sure. Panel light. Do they work? Let's leave them on. Let's leave that off. Right, very slow train this is. Zoom the camera out a little bit there. Alright, start slowing down for Canesham. Step two brake application, I think. See how that takes us. I don't know, but I somehow doubt that rail physics, like ice on the track, is simulated in this game properly. As I said, I don't know, but I've got a funny feeling that it's not. Got an express train coming the other way. Class 47, I think. With some empty hoppers. I prefer cab view in this game for the simple reason that I generally miss the AWS alerts, which light up a little flower down here. I'm sure you'll see it at some point. Um, and when you miss them, the train automatically emergency brakes. And when it emergency brakes, you can't really undo that. Oh, I might overshoot this station. I don't know, the brakes seem pretty good on this train. I suppose it doesn't weigh much. Alright. Come to a stop somewhere in the middle. Maybe brake a bit harder. Back to step two. Uh, brake pressure is this gauge here in the middle on the left. Uh, I think the right hand needle indicates how strong the brakes are on. Let's open the doors for the people. Don't know what the left one is. I think that's just telling you if there's air in the system. Um, it's a bad thing if there's not. Right, just pick these guys up. It's a bit unusual how the doors are asymmetric on this train. So you have, I think it's because the toilet's on there. So each carriage has like two doors on one side, one door on the other, and the toilet in the other corner. That's based purely on my experience riding on this train in the past though. Right. Uh, I thought we were gonna go then, let's go. Sorry buddy, you missed your train. And you're gonna get hit in the face of a camera. Oof. Right, 
So that was our first stop. I think I did okay then with the uh, stopping distance and all that malarkey. First Great Western. Of course, that company doesn't exist anymore, First Great Western. Uh, it's now Great Western Railway. Because the way the franchising works in the UK is the most complicated thing on Earth. And I'm not going to try and explain it because I don't understand it myself. Um, so moving swiftly on. Um, I thought I might as well answer where I've been for, for a while. I don't think I've made like a proper voiceover video since, what, August? I think August. Um, and basically there's two reasons for that. The first is that I got a new job. So on my old job I'd usually work until 10 o'clock at night. Uh, sometimes half 10. So I could come home, make videos, have a nice lie in the next day to make up for it. Because um, I generally record my videos late at night. The second reason is that I suppose kind of my niche on this channel was like things like OCRP, DOJ, stuff like that. Um, clerk. Uh, basically roleplay, police roleplay stuff. And to be honest with you, there's only so much of that you can do before it starts becoming less interesting. And you just need a break sometimes. And even now, after what's it been like six months, seven, more than that, eight months, I think, it just. It feels like I don't want to go back to it. And that's not to be negative about any of the communities. I think what the issue was, was because I was doing it to record as well. Um, you try and vary your activities a lot more rather than build up a storyline or anything like that. Uh, so a lot of RP people will have a character and they'll build the background to it and they'll build the future of it. And you're basically following the life story. What I was doing was having multiple characters and going on multiple scenarios. And as a result, it just feels like I've done it all. And every now and again, you'll get a scenario that doesn't quite go the way you want. And it just kind of puts you off. And I've hit that point now where I'm just like, I don't want to do it anymore. I just can't be asked to do it anymore. I can't be asked to deal with it. Um... It sucks, because they are really good communities. Like, the people in there are generally, on the whole, really good guys. And you do meet people from a lot of different backgrounds. Um, and I, I genuinely, I was enjoying it, but I just feel burnt out with it. So, that's... I'm not saying there'll be no more videos on RP. I'm just saying that I just needed some time. Um, I was contemplating jumping on there at some point this week. Because, uh, you know, things might have changed, I might be able to catch up and there'll be different stuff. Um, but I don't know yet, I'd have, you'd have to wait and see. So yeah, that brief explanation over, that's where I've been for, um, for the last god knows how long. i got to be fair though, my new job uh, is a really good job. So before, uh, I was a supervisor at one of the largest warehouses in Europe. Um, and basically I got offered a promotion from supervisor on the shop floor, so to speak, to a uh, planning manager. So basically it'd be my job to make sure the headcount's accurate and to plan work and make sure that we're running as efficiently as possible. And uh, it's an office job as well, so I couldn't turn that down. I know office jobs ain't for everyone, but I really enjoy mine. And it was something different. I've always worked in warehousing, and uh, this was just something new, something completely different. A change of scenery, a change of role, a chance to expand my knowledge. So I was like, hell yeah, I'll do that. Um, and the hours are fixed as well. So now my hours are 8 till 4, which I'm definitely not going to moan at. But it just seems like it gives me less time at night to record videos and stuff. And now I'm in a routine, even on the weekends, it's just hard to to keep up and uh, to stay awake at stupid o'clock in the morning to record these videos. Uh, and the obvious answer, why don't I record them in the day? Uh, truth is, because life gets in the way and I've got washing and stuff to do. And Yeah, adulthood is a lot less interesting than I pictured when I was a kid. <laughs> I think that's pretty much the truth of it. So kids, ah, I missed the AWS alert. Gosh darn rootin' tootin'. 
And that, kids, is what happens when you don't pay attention. Let's just say that paying attention to important things has never been my strong point. Right. So, what we've got to do now is... Throttle zero. Reverser. Forward. Oh, my throttle was at 100%. Well, that was very easy to reset. <laughs> I was honestly expecting it to be a lot more complicated than that. So the reason that happened is there was a 90 mile an hour speed sign there, so the speed limit dropped. And in the UK, that's the AWS light, by the way. The flower, whatever they call it. So in the UK, there's got to be an alert whenever something that is going to mean that you slow down or change speed or change track um, there's an alert to let you know that that's coming up and that's the AWS so it does like a little beep and then that light comes on and if you don't acknowledge it then it does that uh, and that's because the speed limit dropped that's why that one went off then right let's stop at Oldfield sorry if my voice is a bit raspy by the way I don't know if I've already mentioned this uh, I've got man flu, which is the worst condition known to humankind. Um, yeah, I'm still recovering. Oh, that was the AWS alert. There you go. Don't know what that was for. There's probably another speed limit reduction coming up. Another first great western train. I think I went a bit far down the platform there. I don't know, there's no stop indicators here. What's this? A class... 166. It's a shame that uh, Great Western Railway didn't keep the library, because I think the first Great Western library is pretty cool, the Dynamic Lines, I think it's called. It's quite a good looking library, the blue is quite nice as well. No. Oh. Is that my indicator to go? I think so. Yes, it is. Got to get inside to, uh, to push the throttle forward. Uh, I'm using a keyboard and an Xbox controller, so that's why the mouse sometimes appears on screen. Yeah, that's what that other AWS was for. 40 mile an hour sign. Yeah, so if you see a cursor pop up, it's because I'm pressing something on the keyboard like that to turn the wipers off. That's all it is. Oh, these wipers are driving me crazy. It's like it's echoing inside my head. I think oh, my headphones turned up too loud. That's probably what that is. Don't know what any of these do. Probably important stuff though. So I'm not going to play with them, even if they do work. Alright, we are coming up now to Bath Spa. It's 40 zone coming up, so I'm going to reduce the throttle. i got to be fair, out of all the weathers, like I know a lot of people go, oh, I love summer. I love snow. I don't know who's with me on that, but... If I win the lottery, or I suddenly become rich, my plan, and I definitely have thought about this quite a lot, I am going to move to Canada, I'm going to buy a little log cabin up in the Rocky Mountains somewhere, have some super fast internet installed, and a nice sports car that I can go drifting around in. That is my plan when I become rich, which is definitely going to happen at some point. All right. I think I left my brake in a bit late there, so let's go full service. My, my customers, my passengers probably aren't going to be too happy with that, but screw them. I don't care, I've got a job to do. So this is Bath, very, very historic place. Um, I think it's named that because there's a Roman bath nearby. Um, actually, that's quite an interesting thing, uh, I'd say. Um, 
so where I live, uh, there is a Roman town, and it's got a bunch of Roman stuff there, like an amphitheater, which is like a stadium, Roman stadium. Uh, it's got Roman baths, a Roman museum. I've wore an authentic piece of Roman armour, which was really cool. Very heavy. I remember that bit. Uh, I was only a kid. It was part of a school trip that I went on. Doors are clear. Brakes are off. And let's go, go, go. Right, so... We are currently there. So... We are turning off the main line shortly. Heading south. Um, fresh, fresh Ford. And. Av Avoncliff? Avoncliff? Not quite sure. Bradford on Avon. So the River Avon's around here basically. Uh, what's that? Trowbridge. I know someone who lives in Trowbridge. Trowbridge, however you want to say it. And our final stop will be Westbury. I just pressed the button to open the doors by mistake. <laughs> I'm supposed to turn the wiper on. That would have been bad in real life, I feel. Um, so how did all your passengers die? Well, funny story. Is that a real castle? I don't know. I might have to look that up online afterwards. I think that might have been a real castle. Very short tunnel. Right, so we're coming up to the junction where we're going to turn off the Great Western Main Line. Um, so further on down this line, in the direction we're going, uh, the line splits. Uh, as if you were coming the other way, so it diverges. Um, the southern part is the bit we're on now that goes to Bristol Temple Meads. And then travels down to Cornwall and the south west of England. Had to think about that then. Uh, the northern part goes around Bristol, just gently touches the edges and goes to Bristol Parkway, uh, which is not as big as Temple Meads, but still a fairly big station. And then that splits and one track goes towards Avonmouth, one track goes towards Temple Mead, so they merge up again. And then the main line, uh, on the Great Western Main Line, goes right, and it goes through the Seven Tunnel, I'm going way too fast for this junction, and turns into the South Wales Main Line, uh, it goes through Newport, Cardiff, to Swansea. Uh, the Southern Line, so from Temple Meads to the South West of England, that is considered the Great Western Main Line. At some point it turns into the Riviera Main Line. Um, and that is possibly the most scenic track in uh, in Britain. Definitely, maybe, potentially the world. So it goes along the seafront. Very pretty. Uh, there's some very dramatic videos of waves hitting the seawall that the track goes along and covering trains in water. Which I'm sure is great for their electrics, you know. Why wouldn't it be? Right, changing track here, crossing onto the down main, and then I don't know what this track would be called. The the up Westbury. I don't know. That was a guess. Don't take that literally. But we're now off the Great Western Main Line, which used to have a seven-foot gauge. <laughs> I don't know why I know that. Um, now, standard gauge in the UK is 4 foot 8.5. Uh, I think it's about 1.4 metres. 1.5, something like that. Um, I think it's closer to 1.4, it's got to be. It can't be much more than that. Um, but yeah, it used to be 7 foot back in the days of Brunel, uh, the world famous Brunel, who actually built the Clifton Suspension Bridge over there, which is. Uh, Really cool bridge. If you live near the area and you've never seen it before, it's uh, it's pretty cool to walk over it. It's a really good view of Bristol. Right. Speed limit's gently increasing. What was our next station? Something Ford. Uh, so we've got two gentle curves. A gentle left. Okay, I'm not going to keep track of them. Uh, Freshford. Fresh Ford? Freshford? 
Not sure how you pronounce that. It's probably about a mile and a half away. Seventy miles an hour. Something tells me we're not going to reach that speed. Every canal there. Not sure if that's a canal or a river. Or <laughs> could even be a road. No, it's not a road. I don't think. No, that's not a road. It looks like a canal, but it could very well be a stream or a brook. I don't know. Generally, canals are straighter than that. So I think that might be a river. Not 100% sure. Oh, it could be the River Avon. That would make sense. It's good attention to detail that all the trees are dead. I've done a couple. I like that. It's one of those simple things that you don't really appreciate, but if it wasn't the way it was, it wouldn't look right. Just paint green trees white or whatever. Damn, we're only 12 miles away already. It's not too bad, not too shabby, good timing. As I said, this is quite a nice little short route. Try and get a good thumbnail. I might just use the one from Bristol Temple Mead Station. Maybe that? With a green light going past? That would be pretty cool. I'm speeding. Fixed it. Well, there goes my plan of having a perfect run. <laughs> Again, pay attention, kids. Off. I'm just going to turn the wipe on intermittently. I know I keep moaning about it, but it genuinely is annoying me. Limpy Stoke Dane, apparently, this track that we joined is called. <laughs> I prefer my name, uh, Westbury Dane. So, a Dane track faces away from London, generally. An up track faces towards London. If it doesn't go near London, then it's the bigger city, I think. I'm pretty sure that's how they do it. That W sign means whistle, which probably means there's a level crossing come up somewhere. Alright, I'll start breaking for Freshford. But yeah, I, I don't know the ins and outs of trains and train tracks and all this nonsense, but I know some decent amount. Uh, yeah, so I think it's based on whichever the bigger destination is. Um, if it's between two cities, this is a, uh, like a spur off a main line. And at the end it's Westbury, so this, in my head, would have been called Westbury Dane. Um, wait, no, that can't be right, so it's facing Westbury. I don't know, the only rule I know for sure is that if it's facing London, it's up. If it's facing away from London, it's Dane. So that does mean that up tracks often run south, which doesn't make much sense. But I'm sure the people that named them knew what they were doing. Actually, they're probably named by a committee. Release the brakes a little bit, just to coast into the station here. Right. Ooh, this is going to be a tight fit. Can I stop at the right point? I'm going to go right to the end of the station. Because otherwise I'm scared my train may not fit. If I apply the brakes about here, I think this should be in the right place. Give or, give or take. There are there about. Ah, my front door's not on the station properly. Ah, I'm gutted by that. I did have enough room at the back. It's just rolled a bit too far. Penalty a thousand pounds. A few trespacks on the train track. 
what does that say? Finest snuff cockerman. Don't know what that means. Right, we're good to go, we're good to go, we're good to go. Almost. There we go, good to go. If you look closely at the door next time it opens and closes, it's the same door they use on buses. Just saying. <laughs> it's an interesting divergence. I, I own a bus company. What am I going to build next? A train. Okay. Pretty sure there are train manufacturers. I don't know if it's the only one they built. I don't know. It's... It's hard to explain because it looks like every other train, but when you actually ride on them, you can tell that something's weird about it. And also the fact that it only has one wheel in each corner instead of a full bogey, um, with generally four or six wheels. Generally four for passenger trains. The ride on these is uncomfortable, and when they go around corners, they do that high-pitched screech sound, as the metal, like metal on metal because the wheels like slide a little bit or whatever. Eek. I'm going a bit fast. Will I stop in time for what looks like an even smaller station? I'm assuming if the train's longer than the station, you just put your front car on there and whatever else fits. That seems to make sense in my head. Looks like our station up ahead. Oh, we got a we got a friend as well coming in the other direction. Is that a class 166 again? It is indeed. Nice scenery, probably gonna make me miss my stop now. Oh yeah, this damn this station's tiny. Gonna have to brake a little bit harder than I was. Ah, perfection. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Can please open. That's all right. I must say the interior is modelled extremely well. That is accurate. I don't know why it does that, but yeah, every now and then, I suppose if you have four mates, some seats just they like they randomly switch directions. It's pretty much a universal thing for every train. Oh, oh, we good to go? Yeah, I'm lost. Yeah, good to go. No, we're not. I'm so glad I didn't start moving then. Now we're good to go. <laughs> that could have been bad. I'm glad I heard that sound. Alright, full throttle. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Eight miles left. Eight miles. That is not too far. Don't know what that is. Maybe a mile marker? Does it say the same thing in this direction? No, it does. It's got to be a mile marker of some kind, right? Six miles till you join the main line, maybe? Oh, now we've got two rivers. So one of these has got to be the Avon, right? The River Avon. Oh, that's a canal. That's a canal boat. Yeah, interesting. Canal crossing a canal crossing a train track. A bit unusual. Yeah, Bradford on Avon. So this has to be the River Avon here. I'm assuming that Avon has the same root words. Because around, not so much this part of England, but not too far away, they speak Celtic. Like some Celtic languages. And Celtic is also what spurred the Welsh language. So... I know for a fact that river in Welsh is Avon. A F O N, it's pronounced Avon. So I'm assuming Avon has the same root word. 
It's entirely a guess. Uh, I probably should research before I start recording. Um, but yeah, in, in Welsh, most rivers are called like Avon something, so like Avon Lewid, Avon Usk, um, because Avon is river in Welsh, and Welsh the Celtic language, so it must have a very similar root word. And then the River Avon ends in, unsurprisingly, Avonmouth, which is just west of Bristol. I think I break too early for this station. Way, way too early. So this is Bradford on Avon, which I think is the last stop. Oh, that's a bit odd. A bit of train track with no snow on it. Must have been a train park there or something. Yeah, if I remember from the map correctly, this is our final stop, isn't it? Oh wait, no, we got one more. So we got Trowbridge. That's quite a large town, Trowbridge. And then we stop at Westbury. And the track continues down. And eventually rejoins... Uh, I think that's Taunton there? Is that Taunton? Yeah, so it rejoins the Great Western Main Line at, like, just north of Taunton. So if we went the other way out of Bristol, we would have went down here past Western Supermare, which is a really awesomely named town. Uh, pretty much directly south, rejoin Taunton, down to Exeter. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Exeter St. David's, and then that would continue down to Plymouth, Penzance, Cornwall, Devon, the works right through. Yeah, we're good to go. We're good to go. Next stop, Trowbridge. Welcome aboard the 1007 service from Bristol Temple Meads to Westbury. The next stop is Trowbridge. That has a lot of full fiestas. We've got a tunnel. Used to be a game when I was a kid. I don't know if this is a worldwide thing. But uh, whenever you're on the motorway, highway, uh, or basically any road, uh, generally motorway though, because there's usually tunnels on motorways, if you go into a tunnel, you have to hold your breath for the full length of the tunnel. Don't know where that came from, it's probably parents trying to shut their kids up in the back of the car squabbling. But yeah, you uh, just as you approach the tunnel, you take a deep, big, deep breath, and as you hit the tunnel, you gotta hold your breath, uh, and you can't breathe back in again till the end of the tunnel. It's really challenging at the Mont Blanc Tunnel. <laughs> channel, the Channel Tunnel. Yes, uh, I don't know if that's a worldwide thing. A lot of things that when I was a kid I thought everyone did, turns out they don't. Uh, and it made me look like an idiot a few times. For example, the word kutch. I didn't know the word kutch was a local term, so uh, I was like, oh, give me a kutch to someone, and they're like, what the hell are you on about? Stop smoking crack. <laughs> Bradford Junction, 40 mile an hour, so that means we're probably switching track. Oh, AWS warning to warn me of the 40 mile an hour speed limit. Break for that about now. We've got a whistle board coming up. Does this train have a bell? Right. Ah, so it has two different horns. It doesn't have a bell though. The bell is just a different pitched horn. Ah, that makes sense, I suppose. Generally, horns in the UK are uh, monotone like that, or like uh, multi-tone. Don't know why. Probably a Doppler effect kind of thing. Right, why are we on a 40 mile an hour zone? That's just a sharp corner. The, the, the lowest speed limit combined with the junction made me assume that we were switching track. But I guess not. Are we joining a track? Oh, uh, looks like we're joining a track. Though we're nowhere, nowhere near Bradford. Bradford's up North England. Oh, 
Alright, 60 mile an hour limit coming up. I should be able to make that if I floor it now, because this is not the fastest vehicle. E yes, timed that well. Bit of an odd tunnel there. Two tracks at one entrance, one at the other. Alright, we are coming up to Trowbridge. Has a 50 limit. Doesn't matter though, because we're going to be stopping there anyway. I don't know if this track is, but the Great Western Main Line that I was talking about earlier, that we drove a little bit down, uh, after this route was released, got electrified. So we used to have HSTs, which are like high speed trains. Um, quite comfortable, but quite old, is my assessment of them. I've been ridden them for quite a few years. Uh, and then we got nice, shiny new replacement ones called I ICPs, I think? IECs? Something like that. Intercity. I can't remember. Um, built by Hitachi, I know that. Um, haven't ridden on one, but they're very shiny, they're electric, and they go past my work, and when it's raining or icy, you can see sparks flying off the top of them where the electric's not hitting the cable properly. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I, I very much doubt that this route is, but the rest of the Great Western Main Line, pretty much the full length of it, and the South Wales Main Line, including the Seven Tunnel, has all been electrified since the release of this route. Um, so, I don't know if that's in the works to have a revamped version of this. That would be pretty cool. See the differences, kind of thing. Right, come on, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, it would be pretty cool if they re-released it with all the electrification. Because it wouldn't be that difficult to do, surely. They've already got the base route, they just need to update it, essentially. Uh, my headlights wrong? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was pressing H to test the horn. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to fix that. There we go. I definitely knew how to fix that. Right, 50 limit going up to 70 in but a moment. 0 0.08, 0 0.08 of a mile. Four miles to our final destination, Westbury. I assume that we are currently in Wiltshire. I don't know. Westbury, Trowbridge. Yeah, I think this is Wiltshire, which is a very, very scenic part of the country. Um, there's a tank training ground in Wiltshire. Um, <laughs> it's really interesting. There's like this main road, uh, it's like a two lane uh, carriageway. It's quite fast, I think it's about 50 limit. And you go down, and there'll just be random signs tank crossing at speed. Uh, I've seen it once and literally the tanks do not slow down, so you've really got to be on it. Uh, but yeah, you'll be driving through and just all of a sudden a Challenger 2 main battle tank will just go like 20 mile an hour across the road. Um, I don't think anyone's ever had an accident. I uh, certainly hope not, because that would certainly be fatal for the car driver. Um, but yeah, it's, honestly it's surreal driving down there. Like. You'll just see a patch of mud across the road with tank tracks through it. And as I said, um, I've got family in England, so I used to drive through it quite a lot. And one day we're just going along, and we could see tanks like messing around in the distance, which as a little kid, obviously I was staring at at the window. And then all of a sudden my dad braked hard, and we looked out the window, and this, I don't think it was a Challenger 2, but it was a big tank. Vroom, straight across the road, about 20 foot in front of us. And 
honestly, it was the most wicked thing I've ever seen. Or well, one of, at least. But yeah, that's it's so awesome. I think the scariest thing I've ever seen also happened in the car with my dad. Um, we was going to West Wales, along the motorway, uh, doing about probably 80, 90 mile an hour. As you do, because no one actually obeys the speed limit, right? Uh, and my dad's driving, front right seat. My brother's in the front left seat as passenger. I'm sat in the back, kind of between the two seats, uh, in the middle seat. Going along, and there's like this tipper van, a uh, flatbed van, uh, in the middle lane. We're in the right lane. And my dad's just about to overtake it. There's probably about 50 yards between us and the uh, this tipper van. And all of a sudden, I just saw my dad duck like there was no tomorrow. My brother almost ended up in the footwell. And I did. I couldn't see anything because I'm sat in the back. The roof was obstructing my view. So I'm like, what is going on? And then all of a sudden, bang. Plank of wood, probably about inch wide, four inches thick, about two meters long, embeds itself straight through the windscreen of my car. Uh, right where my dad's head, like where my dad would sat. And it went through and it hit his driver's seat and it got embedded in the fabric of his seat. And I couldn't see it. I was sat in the middle seat. If that was a foot to the right, that would have taken my teeth clean out of at least. Or if my dad didn't see it, it, it probably would have killed him. Like it was right at kind of like chest, throat height. Uh, it was honestly one of the most insane things I've ever seen. So my dad, fair play to him, ducked down, but he still kept driving. Pulled over to the hard shoulder, and we all got out and looked, and it looked like the car was a unicorn. Because it just had this, like, two-meter plank of wood, probably about a meter left of it, coming out of the roof of the car. And it honestly was the scariest thing that ever happened to me in my entire life. It almost was enough to put me off driving. Not quite enough, though. <laughs> right, we are at a yellow light at our final destination. Fortunately, I can see on the little map at the bottom that the red light, which would be our next light, is after the platform, so I don't have to worry about that, but in real life you definitely would, because you wouldn't know that. Right, so we're going into platform two. Let's have some quiet for a little bit. I assume Westbury's a fairly big place, given the size of the station. I know it's a junction between two major lines, but surely it's got to be quite a big town as well. No, we're not switching track at all, we're just going straight in. I assume there'd be some higgery-jiggery on, uh, on the tracks there. Well, that's a cool attention to detail, that the snow doesn't fall underneath the platform. Like, underneath the canopy. I swear that was a thing at one point. Just... Basically, everything got tinged white, uh, like white. Right, stop just before this red signal. Let's give it a break too. Don't, don't, don't keep going. Please don't keep going. There we go. Right. Guys, that was uh, South Western Expressways from Bristol Temple Meads to Westbury, Platform 2. Uh, there's our rail replacement bus service, as there always is. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I know I rambled quite a lot. That's pretty much what I do. Talk nonsense, tell you stories that are completely out of context, and uh, say smash the like button at the end. So, if you like this, smash the like button. Uh, make sure you subscribed. And I will see you next time. Uh, just quickly, did we get any errors? Penalty of break point four times. <laughs> I swear that's not accurate. I can't. So we had one emergency break. I did speed once, I remember that. Penalty break applied four times. I don't know, I'll have to watch the footage back. I can't remember what happened ten seconds ago, literally. Yeah, thank you so much for watching, uh, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.